The chief city of this southern realm was Osgiliath, through the midst of which the great river flowed, and the Numenorians built there a great bridge, upon which there were towers and houses of stone wonderful to behold, and tall ships came up out of the sea to the quays of the city. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth on this fine day. Today I want to discuss with you all the former capital of Gondor, Osgiliath, and its history. There will be some related articles and videos in the description and cards to further our conversation, so please check those out. My friends, as always, I appreciate you all being here. Let's begin our tale. Our story begins after the downfall of Numenor in 3319 of the Second Age. While the island of Westerness and many of its people came to ruin after defying the Valar and heeding the Council of Sauron, some folk, the faithful Numenorians who stayed true to the Valar, the elves, and retained the wisdom concerning Iru's gift of death, escaped the island. These faithful were led by Elendil and his sons Isildur and Anarion. While Elendil and his ships went north towards the lands of Linden in Middle-earth, his sons went south, coming up the great river Enduin, and they came into the lands that were afterwards called Gondor. Asildor, eldest of the sons, made his house in Minas Ethiel, the Tower of the Moon, in the eastern mountains of the realm, and Anarion, his younger brother, made his abode in Menes Anor, the Tower of the Sun, at the foot of the western mountains in the realm. But both Asildor and Anarion were kings, the royal sons of High King Elendil, whose kingdom was Arnor in the north, but Elendil was also the high ruler of both realms, while his life yet endured. However, since Elendil dwelt in the north, at the time of the founding of the realms of Gondor and Arnor in 3320, Asildor and Anarion ruled Gondor jointly, as equals and as brothers, and their thrones were placed side by side in Osgiliath, the citadel of stars which was constructed astride the river Anduin, the river that had first taken these kings and their people into Gondor, to home. This city had keys for sea vessels that came up the river, and a great stone bridge whereupon houses and towers of carven stone were set. Now I hope you all are picking up on the theme of celestial duality in the etymology in Gondor and its rulers. Asildor, whose name means Servant of the Moon in Quenya, dwells in places with the root of Ethiel, meaning moon in Sindarin thus making Athelion the land of the moon and Menes Ethiel the tower of the moon. Those are all east of the river Anduin, and then to the west of the river is the realm of Anarion, whose name apparently closely means the son of the sun in Quenya. His places have the root of Anor, meaning sun in Sindarin, thus making Anorion the land of the sun and Menes Anor the tower of the sun. And so at the middle points of both their lands, where under the moon rises in the east and the sun sets in the west, Thematically and literally, there are the stars, and Osgiliath, the citadel of the stars. Hopefully you all find that etymological tangent as interesting as I do. Sorry if you don't. <laughs> Tolkien's love of languages can be seen everywhere. Anyway, back to the lore. The great bridge in Osgiliath would also hold the Dome of Stars, which housed the Osgiliath Stone, greatest and master of the seven Palantiri that were brought to Middle-earth from Numenor. Now, Osgiliath would face its first threat as the capital of Gondor during the War of the Last Alliance when, after Minas Ethiel was taken by Sauron in 3429, Asildor sought aid from the north, while his brother Anarion held back the forces of Sauron with his people at Osgiliath. Eventually, Asildor brought aid from the north with Elendil, Gilgalad, and many others, and lifted the siege on Osgiliath, pushing Sauron's forces back into Mordor. Even after the deaths of Asildor and Anarion, and at the beginning of the Third Age, Osgiliath remained as the capital of Gondor, even if some of the kings, those descended from Anarion, would dwell in Menes Anor during the summers. But just as great and large kingdoms often divide and have strife from within, it was no less with Gondor and its capital. A few years after Eldakar, the son of the king of Gondor and a woman of Ravanion, ascended to the throne, a civil war called the Kinstrife broke out in 1437 of the Third Age. And Castamir, the man who led the rebelling side against Eldakar, put a siege upon Osgiliath. Eldakar and the faithful men held the city long against the traitors, but eventually hunger and the greater forces of the enemy drove them out, and Osgiliath was left in flames. During that siege, the tower of the Palantir of Osgiliath, the Dome of Stars, was destroyed, and the Great Stone was lost in Anduin. Though the city was eventually recovered by the forces of Eldakar, it had lost some of its greatness in the war, both for the damage done to it and the atrocities that had occurred there. While surely some of Osgiliath's damage was repaired, the Great Plague of 1636 depopulated the city, along with many of Gondor's outposts, 
and many folk fled west or east, and the city began to fall into ruin. Four years later, in 1640, the seat of the king was removed to Minas Anor, and so the city that had once been one of the fairest places of men in all of Middle-earth was greatly diminished. Its beauty faltered, but was never fully lost. Osgiliath became more of an outpost of Gondor, especially once Minas Ethiel was lost in 2002 of the Third Age, and became thereafter Minas Morgul, the Tower of Sorcery, and Minas Anor became Minas Tirith, the Tower of the Guard. It is sad, the places named in romantic reverence for the stars, sun and moon, were thematically and literally changed for war. Although Osgiliath would keep its name, even though people became afraid of the town, for it seemed haunted and was abandoned, after the coming of Urukai in 2475 and the taking of the once great city by those forces from Mordor. The steward Boromir, for whom Boromir son of Denethor is named, would retake the city, but indeed it was finally abandoned by the people of Gondor, and the Great Bridge had been destroyed in the battles. Thus, this place of light, beauty, brotherhood, and reverence of stars became a military ruin and was at times garrisoned by Gondor, likely during Gondor's battles with the Haradrim or Easterlings especially. Gondor would hold the western part of the city, and defend the last bridges that yet remained, while the eastern parts of the city, just like Athelion itself, would be more dangerous and more disputed throughout the years. But Osgiliath would remain in Gondor's control overall through to June 20th of 3018, when Sauron launched his assault on Osgiliath, which started the War of the Ring in earnest. Boromir and Faramir, the sons of Denethor II, and two brothers not unalike to Isildur and Arian, led their forces against the armies of Mordor, which were led by at least one Nazgul. Only some of the eastern Gondorian force would survive, and Boromir, Faramir, and some others held the last bridge standing in the city until it too was broken, and those survivors were forced to swim to safety. The rangers of Gondor, led by Faramir, continued to hold the western part of the city until March of 3019, when the hosts of Mordor overran the eastern part of the city, and even went on to build ferries and barges to push out the rangers entirely. Denethor would command his last surviving son to return to Osgiliath, and the causeway forts on the western side and attempt to retake the city. This was of course impossible and cost many Gondorians their lives, and almost Faramir his, even with the aid of Gandalf at the forts and then later during Faramir's retreat to the city, where he was also saved by Imrahil and the Swan Knights alongside Gandalf. No, Osgiliath was just a means to an end for Sauron and his forces from the east and the south, that end being the total downfall of the west, for they used the city as a forward outpost to construct siege towers to use during the siege of Minas Tirith. The hosts of Mordor even built some makeshift bridges for other siege weapons such as Grond, and the former capital of Gondor became the staging ground for the fall of that kingdom. But Gondor had many allies, and more power than Sauron had supposed, for the Free Peoples won the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, and would afterwards go on to pass through Osgiliath on their way to challenge Sauron during the Battle of the Black Gate even as some Gondorians began working in Osgiliath to strengthen its defenses once more. Of course, the West would be victorious in their gambit, and Sauron's ring was destroyed, and Osgiliath would never again be held by the forces of darkness. The dream of many, such as Boromir, whose funeral boat had once passed under Osgiliath down the Anduin on its way to the sea, or his brother Faramir, who nearly perished in the defense of the city, proved true in the end. Many people of Gondor would pass through Osgiliath on their way to the celebrations at the fields of Cormallon. The city of Osgiliath would surely flourish more in the days of the king that came after than it had in many centuries. And though the seat of the king would stay in Minas Tirith, the stars would shine on Osgiliath once more as it was rebuilt by the Gondorians in the waning years of the Third Age and on into the Fourth Age, although it never would be what it once was in the high days of Gondor. But it was not beyond repair. And so we come to the end of our tale about Osgiliath, the Citadel of Stars. From Osgiliath we see that, though anything can suffer great damage, nothing is beyond the hope of restoration and renewal. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed this video on Osgiliath. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts, questions, additions, and corrections on Osgiliath's history? Let me know in the comments below. It is really interesting that Osgiliath used to be the capital of Gondor, and yet suffered perhaps more during war than any other city in the kingdom. But I am glad it could be restored in the end, if only somewhat. To further support the channel, please check our music channel, Facebook, Twitter, merch, and Patreon for a podcast and Discord server. All of those links are in the description below. 
I want to shout out our Valor tier patrons, Adrian De La Tour, Chris Ortner, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putin, and Mark Kralik, Blair Scouten, Tobias Goldner, Ryan Ramsey, Merton, John Hume, Tom Bombadil, Ridgey93, Jennifer Wood, Sam McBee, and our newest Valor tier patron, Matt Sabach. Thank you to all of our patrons, I really appreciate it. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today, and I'll see you all again next week with a video on the White Councils of Middle-earth. Everyone, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my great friends.